Yeah, I'm sorry about that. That just... <laughs> my thing just ended up really... Like, really screwing me over. Like, oh, no. Uh, hey, we got to a good point. We could literally, if you want, we can come back to the stream, say our goodbyes, and call it a night. Oh, no, just want. we haven't gotten to that point yet. Since you guys aren't do, need, need to do anything, I was going to, like, get you to pretty much before the test. Okay. That's all me. That works. Yeah. I so, see um, if I can run Discord and... I don't know if I can run D&D Beyond on this. I'm curious if I can. Uh, I want to play. I'm going to test this. If it doesn't work, I'll be right back. While you uh, fiddle with your stuff. Just, hang on. I got uh, to reload it. We gotta actually You're fine. Need... I'm going to play with VR. I'm just going to put this on. Yeah, sorry about that, chat. All right, yeah, you're live again. I see you. Uh, yeah. And I'm going to now host your channel. Okay, do, 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 do. Hosting. Bum, bum, bum. Bum. Yeah. Uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, just like, that was just like unexpected, like, no! What happened right. exactly? My internet crashed. Oh. oh. Dang. So, like, yeah, I was like, no! Uh, but, yeah, sorry about the chat. Anyway, um, yeah, as you see the dark clouds just come in, you see those two yellow eyes appear to you, and you see this huge, gargantuan creature, and as it approaches your ship, you see this is a giant, and not just any giant. This is so huge. Your ship? literally can fit in one hand. Great. He looks down and says, Who is the bearer of the ship? So loud it echoes. You see the captain says, I, Captain Alistra of the SSC Serpent, we bring tithings for all, for the, uh, <laughs> Maldia. From Maldia. Your tidings are accepted. The crew, the crew just runs. Yeah! And I need you all to roll dexterity saving throws. Okay. Um, and immediately I am going... I'll say with, 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 um, advantage. <laughs> yeah, dexterity saving throws. Okay. 13. Oh, saving throws. Whoops. Yeah. I did a check. My so bad. that's 11. That's a natural 20 for Silros. And that's an 18 for it. You all feel the, the ship shake. And, <laughs> uh, yeah. Quim, you grab the table as you tumble to the floor. Wait, when someone's echoing. Sorry. Um,. I, I hear an echo, that's why. That's probably me. Sorry. Okay. No, no, it's okay. Um, I'm, I'm messing with stuff while I'm sitting here. Okay, yeah, sorry. But, um, yeah, you tumble to the floor, Quim. Him, as you realize, <laughs> like I said, the giant picks you up with one oh. hand and carries you. I can and, do D&D &D on, on VR. Yeah. And as the night comes in... Uh, do you guys like do anything or do you want to just head to bed or go about your business because you ain't going go anywhere about... I'll just go about my business do what okay. I want to do All right. anyone else doing anything probably go check on Jerry and yeah. the woman yeah sure Shirley is kind of just sitting there bored scared but kind of bored as Jerry's quip like scared under the chair like eh, huge huge very big Huge. <laughs> it's big, just big bros, big bro. Big bros, big bro? Yes. 
speak, bro. And he kind of does that. The giant is not listening. He just has That's... the ship in one hand, carrying it balanced. <laughs> Just wanted to calm somebody down. He's like, he's like shakily, big bro, <laughs> like scared, but obviously willing. And for an entire day, you guys are carried. And then, as midday the following day, oh, hey, you guys, you know, the giant slowly comes to us and says, "Modi, I'll be with you." And he walks backwards into that that entire abyss of dark clouds and lightning and thunder, and the clouds immediately just dissipate, and he's gone. So I'm gonna ask this: Would the Loxodon know what that thing is? Roll knowledge religion. Oh God! I can do a religion check too. Go ahead. Hey, hello. Do I really like it? did right down. Woohoo! 14. That stuff on Moodya. Or 18 on me. Yeah, 18. Right. So, uh, we got an 18, a 14, and a 14. Uh, Quim and Del, you go like, okay, that has to be something related to Moodya. Uh, I'm looking at also at the pirate and going. I'm, I'm looking at her expression. She, like the first time the giant showed up, she was scared shitless. That part is easy. But as things went on, she kind of calmed down and just like, okay, everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. I'm going to go but, near her and at least put my hand over her shoulder, at least to try okay. and calm her. Yeah. So Rose, but before I get so Rose, that was, you've heard that the gods will sometimes have figures smaller more mortal figures do their bidding and they were no and this one was most likely one of those figures who was given the grace of Moria to travel instantaneously between two places cuz what you usually what would usually take a month has taken about less than a week to happen okay. so you got a blessing, but uh, it's a good thing you kind of saved the pirates. Because um, nothing bad will happen to you, but you would have found out what happens to those who uh, steal from Maudia. Oh, I'm going to whisper in her ear. You're welcome. I'm yeah, I would think. probably go ahead. And, I would relay it probably to them and let them know what's going on. Yeah, I got the same role as you, so I immediately whisper, you're welcome. No, no, you got a fourteen. Yeah, that was. We just know that. that it... I got an eighteen. Oh wait, never mind. I'm like, yeah. Still, so she got an eighteen. I'm like, thought it was got fourteen. I I read no. the name wrong. Nope. So yeah, you was like that has something to do with Modia, but you have no idea what it was. I'm just gonna go. What was your plan after you stole the gold? Live. Just live. Like she's just like so scared, she has no idea what to say. Otherwise, just live. Just is live. she shaking between my hands? Uh, she was, but now your hands are so firm, you, she can't shake. <laughs> like she's just like staring out of on the ocean. Just we're living. If you ever need someone console, I have no problems against it. Yeah, but let's get to dry land first, shall we? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And so the captain, you know, says, Onward to Umbria. And for brevity's sake, you guys take just a single day and you see kind of cresting over the, you know, hills. Let's see if I can actually bring it up. I think I, I don't think I actually got to load it up. Uh, do, 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 do. Your image, cr did, did, so that monster crashed your PC. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> it said no. It said it's a, not happening. <laughs> yeah, it's like nope, like no. Godzilla uh, came in, said nope. <laughs> you <laughs> who have stolen from Modia. Yeah, that's a good thing you say, Tuck, because uh, bad things would have happened. <laughs> so I feel yeah. not bad, and I feel like we got the golden achievement. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, you're just gonna have to wait and see. Darn it, I don't have the image up. Darn it. Oh, I mean, just have to. It's fine. Just you see this 
rather large stone wall and a very large tower with a glowing gem at the top of it. Dear Sauron, it calls to me. Yeah, and as you guys stare at this, because I pretty much have you guys at the top of the ship at this point. Uh, let me get rid of this one. Do, 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 do. Let me get... Um, you pretty much what happens is that <laughs> Francis comes and says, "Beauty, isn't she?" Say hello to say hello to your uh, temporary home, boys. Welcome to Umbria. Great. And as you guys pull in, I want you all to roll a perception check. Nothing dangerous. Just roll a perception check. Okie dokie. Oh what? <laughs> okay. Sorry, I'm Quim? busy with other things. Okay. So Jerry's just seeing it and said, like, check it out, check it out, check it out, big bro, big gem, big gem. <gasps> oh my god, this makes so much good sense. Quim is literally focused, hyper focused now because he's like, I gotta take care of these two things that I have found. I have to take care of whatever the flipping hell that thing is and find out why it works that way. What thing? That giant monster I saw? Oh, yeah. I, I, I would have probably relayed it that way. Because, you know, because we're now buddies. Yeah. Yeah. But I would have relayed it to you. Working acquaintances. Cause yeah, but, um, we Quinn, haven't. Sh as you look out, you see. You see a figure. Mm -hmm. Here, you see very mask, a very masculine-looking figure. He's he's a bit scrawny, he, dark hair, hair, nice robes, robes not fancy, but you know, nice looking, nice clean. Kind of standing there. You see Francis as a hey Steve, Eve, Guildmaster. Here, check it out new recruits, and. I need you to roll a wisdom saving saving throw, Quim. Oh, why pain? I rolled it. Where's oh, did, did I not scroll far enough? There you oh, go. There you go. 16. Sixteen. You feel an urge to bend the knee to this figure for some reason. An urge, but I. But you 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 don't do it like. But you sense that feeling like, I feel like I should bow to this person, but I don't know why. Hi. <laughs> and he looks he looks at the three of you. He says, I see a dragonborn, a half of an... Oh. Why, hello there, Loxodon. And you see this kind of nice, gentle, but almost unnerving smile creep across his face. Nice to see one of your kind here. Uh huh. And because you got a natural twenty, you also see something behind him, and can re immediately rec recognize a revenant behind him. As he turns, and says, "James, why don't you help take care of their bags? I'm sure they're tired after their journey." Also, I'm immediately I puke. Why? The last things I got to see, a thing that scared him to the point of all system failure, he then had the feeling to bow. His stomach went out the window. All right. He said, oh, a bit seasick, but I'm sure you'll do fine. But, you know, plus the oatmeal slash porch. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> One of the sailors comes up to you and, um, actually, roll a constitution saving throw, then... <laughs> at disadvantage just you know just to help with your yeah, story you know the thing is my constitution is my strongest stat save well we'll see what happens then I don't know it, it, it's taking a minute it's yep, so 13. Thir 13 you kind of go <coughs> and you kind of spit out a good solid chunk of oatmeal you want to say it to the yep happens to the best of us don't worry about it <laughs> uh, and you guys are kind of Ceremonies, not ceremoniously, just easily walk down. And it is the, hang on, do, 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 the six of you, along with Francis, walking down. And you see Steve and his revenant, James. James, currently standing there. Jay, uh, roll a perception check, all of you. 
Wait, is this the necromancer you're talking about? Maybe. Finally, I rolled better than a getting one. Thank you, roll twenty, for not treating me like Connor. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you Quim, you're nice. you're you're just focused on Steve here instead of the revenant. The other you other two see the servant behind him, and he he looks very normal for the most part. You know, it's outside of the discolored skin that kind of takes a blue tinge. Hinge. He kind of looks at you, so kind of weighs us. <laughs> Quim, you're just focused on Steve here, and he's somewhat focused on you. Uh, do any of you say anything or do anything? I'm literally going. How long is this the test? Oh, well, the test. Once we get the test, you up and all ready, and you know, get you into the bunkers or. The barracks, Steve. Ah, yes, the barracks, sorry. Hey, uh, we'll get you up with... We'll, I'll let Chess know, and she'll be able to give you the test. Yeah, Thanks. But, uh... I came here to see you, Guildmaster. Me? Why? You can... You see, friends, give a look. Well, uh... I see you came somewhat empty-handed again. Yeah, and? Well! Oh, how do I put this lightly? And all of a sudden, all three of you hear like a screech on the wind Francis shrill and feminine and this man who you guys have seen be joyful and angry is now sweating bullets about to piss his pants oh boy oh boy and he said oh, like, oh no yeah you kind of miss an important date you know no but I I, I oh no 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 do it. go ahead give her your excuse I'd like to see what happens I need another servant Hints. And he looks up to Quim or two. <laughs> you and... see him go and look directly at the boards of the ship, going, "Oh, I feel shitty." And then you, and uh, you hear busting, like rampaging down the dock, a werewolf uh... in a bonnet and dress. And before any of you guys can do anything, all you hear is Francis oh, go, mama. go, wait, wait, oop. and he is knocked off the dock and taken down into the water. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm she just made it down go quick. ahead, and I'm getting off the ship. Well, you guys are already off the ship. You're on the dock. I know, I'm heading. Where do I go? Come along. Oh. Oh, I'll, I'll do you show guys you have way. any preference on what I call you two? And I'm pointing to the goblin and the captain. Shirley? Not. Yes, Shirley. Yeah. Oh, uh, you can call me Shirley. Him. Uh, well, do you have a preferred name? Uh, Ike. All right. You can call him Ike. Okay. Come along. Yeah. We gotta get right. our dorm or whatever. Yeah. Um, Steve says, I'll, I'll lead the way. It seems Guildmaster is a bit busy. He, Wait, I promise. I swear. It's like, I didn't forget. And you just hear just this howling, this screeching and everything. And just Francis saying, please spare me. I mean, it's like, uh, leave him be. By the end of the day, I'll be, have, I'll be bringing him back or bandaging him. This way, I'll lead you up. So, are we with Steve? Yep. Um... Where would I find books on necromancy? You, s <laughs> he pauses in step, and both him and James turn to you, and you feel an unnerving interest, in smile look upon his face, like, "I'm sorry, you want to know ne necromancy?" I was resurrected, but I, I don't know who, and I don't know, I know how when when. I just don't know who. Oh. <laughs> oh, this will be fun. James, remind, put a, take a note. You see him take out a pad of paper. Um, your name, sir. Quim. Or do you want my full? Oh, no, just just Quim will do. Have, have Mr. Quim uh, have an appointment with me. We have much to discuss if he's interested in necromancy. Hey. 
But for now, you have much more pressing matters. If you want necromancy, you're going to have to pass the test. So onward, uh, let's get you all settled and have you meet Miss Chess. Wait. Yes. And you too, gentlemen. Rorex del Mirib. You can just call me Del. All right. And you, Hefel? Um, uh, All right. Boren. All right. Mr. Saros Boren and Mr. Rorex Del. Uh, make a note of that. All right. Follow me. I'll explain to you. You, I'm assuming, since you're with the Guildmaster, you're here for, for the Guild, correct? Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, allow me to explain a few things about Umbra when it comes to the guild. You'll be taking a test. If you pass the test, you'll be given a rank. Ascend in the ranks, you get more information, more uh, perks. The best you can hope for at rank E is discounts at the shops and, you know, free, free lodging at our barracks. But usually we have the rankies go out and, you know, kind of be bodyguards and the like, prove that they can handle a fight or two if it ever comes to them. And from there, we'll we'll figure out what you'll be doing. See what kind of things you can do, what we can do for you. Uh, for instance, we can give you uh, a building of your own to rent out if it's available. You'll, you'll have uh, trade routes available to you, you know, very special trade routes, mind you, and you know, special items, access to items, and spells if need be. But do keep in mind that if you do besmirch the guild name, well, <laughs> put it plainly, no one's going to remember you ever existed. Am I clear? Uh, Crystal. Um, yes. Uh, also, I have questions on how barracks work. How many room beds and stuff are in them? Oh, it's simply a one-night stand. You'll have a room that has four, four beds, any, and we'll stick you with enough people in there. Uh, say for the lady, uh, is she with you? Like, we can have you in a separate room, of course, if the lady's with you. I, I literally go ahead and say, it's up to her. I'm, I'm, my brain don't work no more. Oh, we, I can have it replaced if need be. I, I've i had my fair share of having to switch brains. James here has I'm, actually had quite a few brains changed. But... He's literally putting his hand up. No, 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 it's fine. No, it's fine. <laughs> you sure? I, I'm... Yes. I think he's just in shock from... The giant that. Oh, you met. You must have met the avatar Mo of Mordia. Oh, lovely gal. How she is for Wait, sending isn't those... it Mordia? Mordia. That's Wait. how he says it. Mordia. Mordia. It sounded like said Mordia. That's why I was oh, like, no, Wait, no. Mordia. No, no. Like it's like Mordia. Like I'm trying to keep the character being able to say it his own way. Okay. Like yeah, it's like, special. Why... It's certain Mordia. things. Like certain gods are said in different names by different tongues. Well, no, just oh, no. kind of by accent. Okay. Mordia so, so... ticked off my brain where I was like, wait, Mordia? Morte? No. Morded? No, oh, no, no, dead. no, 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 oh, no, 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 the dead. no, no, oh, no, 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 that's, that's a different god. That's a different uh, god. Yeah, but no, um, but no, it's Maud, it's Maudia. He just says it differently. Okay. He... Had me worried there. Yes. I was like, uh, but the... yes, Matt. Yes, Maldia. Uh, lovely gal, now I've heard. But me, I am I have a different belief system. I believe those who deserve to live get to live, and those who don't, well, they, it depends on what they do. They either deserve to go on to the next life or, you know, be stuck here for a, a few centuries or so. Uh, that's an interesting life decision. Oh, yes. Well, when, when it is my... up to her. Oh, yes. Um, and you, ma'am, uh, this... Shirley, Shirley Rose, are you with any of them? I'm employed by Mr. Quinn here. Oh, well, congratulations on your employment. Um, I can have a separate room set up for her, but I would recommend that you stay with her since if she is your employee, she is That's also fine. your responsibility. I have no problem with that. I just want to make sure she was okay with it. And the goblins? Ike is with me. He, big bro! Oh, I see. I'm just imagining like a child starts climbing on the dragonborn. Uh, well, <laughs> this is certainly going to be fun. But that's very well. Let us continue on. And he leads you through the city. Beyond this huge wall, 
you see a normal looking town for the most part. You see houses, humans, humans, lizard folk and the like kind of walking around. Markets all lovely and everything and let's see if I actually have that. I think I do. Yep, there we go. Yeah, you you know, you you hear, you know, normal sound. And everything seems fine. There we go. <laughs> A little less loud. Um, but yeah. You see fruit stands, people trading, gold, silver, copper being traded through. And he points out a few things like, oh, let's see. Hey, there's a nice tavern down there that I would recommend, man, probably not bringing your best suit or, or a lot of gold. There's a lot of uh, thieves around here as well. Oh, they like to play tricks. Most of them are teenagers. Please try not to kill any. I'd hate, I hate having to bring back teenagers. Nasty work, I'll admit. But, uh, yes, we have quite a bit there. We have, have, oh, there's the magic shop you'll probably have access to. And you see this very shabby looking stall, all with a, uh, old man behind it. It's, come down to Mr. Johnson's magics. It's, I'll have your basic things. Uh, shut up, shut the baby up, up, I'm trying to do business, woman. But, you know, yeah, he's, he's nice once you get to know him. Um, but he'll give you a few good items. Um, we have potions up the guilds. And they're, they're a fair price, about 10 gold. But, but uh, yes. If you need any help with anything, just let me know. There's, or let any of the other staff members know. You can find me in my tower, or if Fran Mr. Francis lives, the guild master can help you as well. But uh, any other questions you have? Uh, just want to go rest. Ah. Uh, it's, it's been an interesting journey. Uh, we, we would like to retire. Ah, very well. The, still the test. Of course. Well, then, let's be off to the guild then, so you can at least meet, meet Miss Chess, and we'll be able to get you all, all nice and comfy in your, in your bunks. And well, he takes you. What? I was going to ask if there was anywhere somebody could get into a fight for a bit. Oh, you want the fight pit? We have that up at the guild, but I would suggest you wait till you are well rested and have completed the test. You'll have plenty of fighting at the test. But we do have uh, weapon stores and uh, the like close by, so you can... We have a fighting pit for you to test your weapons. But do keep in mind, we do not look well upon those who kill each other. But out, to, out in the field, things may happen, but here we do like to respect our other people. Understood? Crystal. Fine. All right. And so he takes you up, and there's another wall that appears. This one, you know, much more clean and well guarded. You see guards with shields and spears. He gives a nod to them, and, you know, they let him through, and they let you guys through. And you see that the tower that you saw from afar is very much huge. It seems all, pretty much windowless, safer at the top. And you see at the bottom of it, a rather large building, about two, three stories, size of a, uh, size of a large manor. Well, this is our guild, and oh, oh, goody, he, it's chess over here, and you see a you know a nice calico cat, that's in nice in nice comfortable vest, wear, uh, dress, nice sundress, continue for us. Ah, Steve, you're here. Are these the new recruits? Yes, they're here for the test. Oh, really? Oh, I'll, I'll make sure to get prepared right away. It'll take a bit of time, so you'll have to take it tomorrow. Is that okay with you? Uh, That's fine. Well, fine. Right. Me. All right, I must then I'll go attend to that. Make sure Dogen actually behaves himself. I don't want any more traumatized guild members. Oh, he'll behave. He'll, he'll be fine. <sighs> anyway, let me show you to your bunks. And he guides you to, you know, a bit into the building. And it is nice. Very clean floors, pristine marble pillars. There's stairs that go up. It's it's not very busy, but you do see guild members moving from room to room. You see a few secretaries. And like, yes, yes, yes. Um, um, okay, yeah, you're good for this quest, but you may want to wait till we actually get the reward money first. There's, he tends to skimp out on that. All right, fine. And you see a dwarf says, ah, 
You should have seen it. I took the dragon in head and I snapped it off his shoulder. Walter, it was made of paper mache. It was still a dragon. It, it was for kids. It, it was still a dragon. In, uh... Wait, do we do kids parties or something? It's, uh, it's mostly morality things. They're, they're the two bards trying to entertain kids. It's, it's, it's a nice bit of money when you need it. God, I wanted to mute my mic before I did that. Jesus. I did not hear anything. Oh, okay then. Just ignore. Called, you caught it exactly when you needed to. Yeah. So, um, mm. he takes you up says, go to the secretary. Like, yes, Matilda. Ah, uh, Steve. How can I help you? Uh, we have new recruits. Can you get the uh, bunk ready? Um, I have two rooms. Will that room for them? Will that be fair enough? Yeah, I believe so. Uh, well, they, you two, you can split the two rooms however you like. But like I said, behave and you'll be fine. Uh, does Chess know? Yes, she's setting up the test now. No, okay. And then, yes. All right. So here are two keys. Yes. All right. Oh, uh, any? Who's going to be in what room? Like, who's going to be in the room? Uh, the way they I'm, said it, I'm staying with my employee because I also don't trust her enough to leave her on her own. Okay, well, that's. You said that they were four room bunks, right? There's four beds to each each room. So you okay. have you have two four bedroom. Four I have bed, no qualms uh, of you guys taking the goblins and I take her. That way, it's basically. You well, guys deal with no, I was going to pull you aside while that. I was trying to get it out, but didn't exactly oh, find sorry. a moment. Yeah, it's still fine. But... That's it's literally how we've been as characters. We've avoided each other's personalities because we don't want to butt heads. No, it's not in the personality factor. Dell would have taken notice too. Okay, you were fine with bashing in skulls. Two moments ago, why suddenly throw up when a palm shows up? Let's explain this better. I've been having a shitty day. And no, been getting more and more, and then food decides to kick itself. I don't know. Does that sound like a thing that would happen to a normal human being? Normal oxidon? Well, given your scenario and given his expertise. I dare say there's something more there. You felt something in your core, didn't you? That's an idealism. I need to get my stuff figured out and I need to get it done quickly. Seems like they're okay with necromancers, so something's off. I'm used to everybody treating necromancy as burn at the stake immediately. Are you guys saying this out loud or in secret? I, I would have pulled him aside and begun speaking with him in hushed tones. Okay, so yeah, Steve won't hear you. And neither, I'm literally and, James, <laughs> and even if James heard you, he can't really say anything. I'm literally telling him, I don't have... I am planning, but I have to plan. If you have anything you were worried about, then that's fine. But no. I have my business. Again, given what I know of you, being that you are undead, great. I'm just going to drop the bomb. Oh. Yeah, he looks at you and like that says, great. That's one answer solved. And that man's expertise is in undead. So... Find it out one way or another. Well, what I'm thinking, you threw up. Why did you throw up? What set you off with him? It wasn't him that set me off. Can I insight yeah. that? Go or... I mean, you can, yeah. if that's okay with uh, Quim. That's fine. It, it, I'm gonna tell you now, he's not lying. Yeah, but you're gonna have to roll Persuasion versus Insight. I'm not gonna try and hide it, but all right. So, but it's also the fact of I'm trying to persuade the truth. Yeah, you're trying to, you're trying to be convincing. So persuasion. I already rolled it. And it's loading. Okay, there it is. Fine. Yeah. Okay. I'm not lying, and I'm literally going. All right. So, yep, everything's 
Yeah, he's definitely telling the truth. It wasn't, it wasn't Steve who was actually setting him off. It was just the food. And everything else, like literally, yeah. just seeing that giant thing. Yep. You don't even Shock. know if it was a normal giant. It was just seemed like it was huge enough to carry a ship, and it just disappeared in a cloud, literally. Double shrug and walk off. Hmm. Okay. Anything else, Silros? You you got anything? Nope. Oh. I just. I'll say I'm I'll... gonna as soon as I get private time with her in a room. I have questions for her. All right. Okay. So Ross, are you gonna do anything? No, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, I'll bunk with uh, Gail and. Just, I I can uh, Jerry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Dell, are you doing anything? Uh, probably find a shrine of battle to pray at, if it is going to be a fight. Ah, okay. So I'll get to you after I get with uh, Quim. Uh, Quim, you say you're just gonna have a talk with Shirley then? Yes, because the fact of so when we get to our bunks, like if they give us our bunks, I'm gonna ask her. I want to actually get this down and get this really understand. So you saw what I saw. Uh huh. Are you glad now that we got you out of there without death? Well, uh, I don't know which would be be worse: uh, death by a giant or death by all the rest of my uh, clansmen. Uh, clansmen. So, um, probably. I want to <laughs> know that I, you trust us. And are well, actually willing to not backstab me. Well, I, unless you try and backstab me, I don't think you're gonna have to worry. Especially after seeing something like that. I'm gonna actually, for once, I'm gonna tell out a lot more truth than I'm gonna let this out. So like, I'm basically gonna tell her exactly what I remember of my past before. I'm gonna, if the stuff that ink, this is mostly gonna be what you can have for flavor. But she's gonna know every detail of what he is and what happened. Okay. I'm not gonna say anything because I don't know. This is your setup. Yeah. Okay. So what you, what you do know is that you were a gladiator in a ring, and you were very much, you were very well off. Of you were actually very, very famous, very powerful, and very strong, it, from your clan. Mm -hmm. Many people thought like, "Holy crud! You're unstoppable." But one day, wait, what was it you didn't know? You didn't know who or you didn't know what? This is what I told you. You can decide that I don't know who killed me and who okay. resurrected me. You, or you could say, I know who killed me, I don't know who resurrected me, or I can know that okay. was your, this is all your decisions. Okay, this one okay. letter you have. Um, so yeah, so I'll say this basically, you're a gladiator, very powerful, and the closer you could guess, because of when it happened, someone rigged the fight you were going to be in, and you died really easily. When you awoke, you were out in the street, disarmed, your armaments gone, your tusks gone, on, and a very large gash across your chest. And you remember words being spoken to you almost as you faded in and out of consciousness before you woke up, saying, and what you seek is very, very rare. Though it is out there, you will have to make the impossible possible. And then that's it. You have to make the impossible possible. And what set off is the fact that you, were, you know you were resurrected, but you don't know how. But there was so little information on necromancy, is you realize that is what was the impossible. So you have to find what is so impossible that can be made possible. Uh-huh. Shirley looks at you and says, Well, that's... I guess my work's gonna be cut out for me information-wise. But, uh... I'm going to... This is your one chance. You can leave. I'm going to allow this. You can take the goblins with you. You can just leave us for where we are. Or you can stay. This is your chance to decide. No, I... I've just seen that. I think I'd rather stick with the person who knows how to fight and was considered impossible to defeat before, you know, leaving, so I'll do what I can. But, uh, 
Uh, I don't know about Ike. Jerry seems smitten with your uh, Dragonborn companion. That's fine. That's, again, That's just, you can tell them the same thing. It's up to them. All right. I'll talk to them tomorrow while you guys are at that test or whatever. Yep. Um, do you do anything else? Nope. <laughs> that okay. was literally me just going, I know I need to get this over with, so if I don't do this now, it's going to be a pain later. All right. Okay, then. Still can be. Uh, Dell. You mm -hmm. roll a perception check for me. All right. Let's go plus two. Wait, where's my perception? There's my perception. Let's go. Roll well. 17. Yeah, nice. Yeah. Okay, so. As you... Okay, that's right. Like, sorry, you got distracted. As you look around, it takes you a little bit, and you see, you see two shrines, almost both interwoven but separate. And you see a warrior with a shield and a sword, and you see a warrior with two daggers. These are two statues. One is let me pull up their names. Do do do. do. Oh. Just ran One is hand. yeah. They both have nameplates next to them. One says Corian, Soldier of Honor. The other says Ultra, Sol Soldier of War. Or, uh, yeah, Soldier of War. Who do you pray to? Uh, Corin. C O R R I N, right? K O R I A N. Okay, so K O R A I N. K O R I A N. I A N. Sorry, yep. I tend to flip blues around. Yep, that's fine. So you worship the Corian? Yeah. As you do so, you hear a bit of clatter behind you as you see a very disheveled uh, Francis Fulmore dragging his feet behind you uh, behind him <sighs> he is like winded out the hell the old maid give you a hard time he looks to you angry for a moment and says do not ever let her hear you call her old you do not know what my wife can do <sighs> So who are you? So you believe in Corian? I don't know what I believe in. Merely the fact that I feel better when I protect those that I view as weak or in need. Uh, well, I wish you luck with Corian. Ultra may have been better for you. Uh, it's merely for right now I pledge no allegiance to a god my oath is to my blade right now fair enough but if you are going to choose between these two I, was, I remember this question well dragonborn would you rather be honorable and let the innocent die or protect the innocent but lose your honor I will take it to heart. Good. I need to go to the bank so I can get something for the anniversary I missed. Uh, uh. And you just watch this very seemingly broken man just shovel himself away to the build to the main building. Uh, uh. Before he leaves, just a real quick passing thing. So, you worship Korean? I. It's complicated. I wish. I worship Ultra more than Korean. But I. It's complicated. And he just kind of shovels himself away, and you get the sense of. You remember how he kind of uh, cringed at what you said of the. of uh, whatever he believed in back on the ship? And you mm -hmm. realize there's a complicated history he has 
but it, it has something tied to old ultra and Korean. But hey, uh, also ink. Yes. I may try and do some art of that goblin, hobgoblin. Sure, I'll send you a reference of what she's looked like. Please, um, please send me as much stuff as you can. I like doing art for NPCs. Oh sure, just uh, understand that. Would... Just hang on. Uh, yeah. Um, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, uh but it, does anyone want to do anything else? I'm pretty much spent there's not much i can do else because i'm in the city and i'm like i did all i can i gave my gold out to everybody you know what I, you know what i would do i would go ahead and probably um before going to the deal i would talk with um quim and uh shirley and say Ask Quim if I may take Shirley to go get some proper fitting clothing. You literally see him over the side. Of, so he has actually finally taken off the cloak. It looks like rat, basically. He actually says, I'm good with coming with you, actually. And for the All first right. time, you see this cloak is covered in patches. And when he takes it off, he doesn't have much clothing except for a pair of pants that are worn and torn. But his back is covered in a tattoo. Hey. Well, let's go shopping then, shall we? <laughs> well, true. That's all me. I'll admit, though, your elven wear is rather comforting. But, yes, let's... Oh, if you would like elven wear, that's fine. We're more than welcome to get some elven wear. It's just something that would fit more proper, is what I'm looking at. Versus... Yes, yes that that would be nice. Thank you. I Mr. gave Soros. two going. I'm trying to remember my coin. I gave three to help to uh, our dragonborn. I gave two to the goblin. Oh, I'm at five coin. <laughs> I only have five gold. Don't worry, you you'll do fine. But I just want to remember. I was trying to keep track of my money. Yeah, just, I'll leave that to you guys. But you know, you guys will be fine. Um, but yeah. As you guys do this, I'll say for brevity's sake, you do, um, for about five gold, you get normal clothes El Elvin made for, uh, for Shirley. She thanks you and, you know, says when she actually gets paid and can get money, she'll give you back the five gold. Unless you plan on just giving it to her. The gold is, it is, it is her. She's fine with I did okay. give her some gold. I gave her, like, three gold. Well, no, I'm talking about uh, Silros paying for it because she doesn't have. Yeah, any that's gold. fine. I get that. I, I literally offer him, "I'll pay you back if I need to." Uh, don't worry about it. And then right. I'm also gonna sit there and I'm gonna buy myself some clothes, some basic no. common clothes, a button-up um, shirt, vest. Those will cost you about two gold. I hand it over. Yeah, be basic just because you're clothing. really huge. <laughs> I know. I'm like, I'm fine with this. Just right, basic button-up so, shirt and a vest, some okay. trousers that don't look torn like hell, and some yeah. shoes. Okay. Well, you cannot Just see. Just so I don't oh. look like the. Yeah. Oh. I was gonna say, I make sure where she has her shoes and stuff too. So yeah. Yeah, she, she gets basic footwear. She's, you know, a little disappointed, but she goes like, eh, better than walking on anything sharp. Yeah. Thank you. And, and, you know what? For another five gold, I'll go ahead and buy an extra set. Just so that she, she in a bag that okay, she can cost, have. That'll be an extra gold, so six gold, one for a bag, six and gold. then yeah. Got it. Is there a food stall? Yeah, there there are plenty. There's like fruits, vegetables, but um, I'll say this: there is a mess hall back at the guild. You guys can eat for free. It's it's. I grab it's good. buy and buy a fruit. I'm buying a fruit. It's all right. It'll cost you about uh, five silver. So half a gold, so you'll okay. have five. And I buy back. two, so I literally buy a gold. Take a gold right. and get two fruit. Toss All right, you, well, get, actually, you get about four. You get about four apples with that. I toss one to uh, our half elf. I toss one to my literal associate. Mm -hmm. Actually, I toss two to her, and then I I take one to myself. All right. Just Meanwhile, a little um, bit more nutritious. Yeah, Dell, 
Are, um, after you were done praying, do you do anything? He would have just turned in. Yeah. You see Jerry kind of been seeing behind you, kind of kind of being quiet. He, he, he was smart enough to give you the sense that, you know, this is something important to you, so he remained quiet. But as soon as you're back there, he said, like, um, she, he crawls under your bed and just sleeps. Okay. I guess. <laughs> Uh, I don't have an extra attack. This is wonderful. This is perfect. You have an Jerry extra. Become... You have an extra attack. It's a joke on the fact that Jerry can now help in combat. I will train him to be the greatest goblin paladin this world has ever seen. <laughs> well, we'll we'll see. First, like, focus the the point at hand. Yeah, um, I'm just joking. But, yeah, <laughs> but no, it's just um, you guys have uh. You guys have taken care of food. You have bunks, new clothes. Um, Quim, I think you're actually out of gold now. You're broke. Yep. I absolutely made myself broke. Yep. I'm the basic barbarian. Yep. I don't, uh, at least I free, don't look you... like a basic uh, drenched corpse. Yeah. Your, your weapons are clean thoroughly, and you know they're made to look nice as a service for you to be at the best for your test <laughs> and as the uh, as Rem's moon peeks over the far hills coating the city in moonlight I will and with the test looming over you that is where we will end the session and you guys finally level up <laughs> to level 2 and I give uh, Quim Tin Silver. Like, I don't like seeing people not have some type of. I'm perfectly fine with being a poor man. But I give you two Tin Silver, nonetheless. That's just a gold. Yes, it is. But it's something. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, but yeah. So, how was it? How was the first session? Of I Lance have Warhammer? no. I have no way I enjoyed it. I liked the fact that I started off getting my own literal helpful person to at least keep me from going into too stupid moments. Yeah. I was and like, now, wow, they actually they actually, you know, instead of killing the bad guy, they persuaded her to stop. And also hired her, so now we have her own literal Yeah. Well, I have my own bookworm for use yep I have no qualms of did you see the uh, image I sent you yes I plan on working on something so that's her monster version correct yeah um but basically she looks like a a hobgoblin you know skin red it's just like she's gonna have like legs instead of the crab beneath her yeah. but I will say that she, she does has an have ability a ability to turn into a crab well ability to turn into that yes but um, her her I will say that if you need to, um, her legs will be a bit, um, armored. I want to say they have kind of a that bumpy crab texture to them. Um, I don't know what it's called, chitin. Well, the the encyclop the image I got came from a. a no, no, what you were trying to refer to as bug armor. Yeah, I chitin. guess something like that. Where the hell is? Gold enemies backstory extra inventory oh currency. Just so I don't forget how much I have. Yeah, but what about the rest of you? Did you guys enjoy the session? I had fun with it. <laughs> I had a lot of fun. Yeah. It was it was a great time. Now for the evil of just doing stupid more. Okay. Well, I mean, I you mean, got what? two weeks, so it's like, yay. I gotta go to bed. But... All right. Are we two weeks? Wait. Oh, right. Grim stuff. Yeah. What are I we don't... doing next week? I have no idea. If we end up, it's up to I think Shadow. Well, depending on everybody else, I can flip flop between either game. It's up to you guys. 
Yeah. Because Seven um, Beast or the She Smucks. Yeah. I have no order to my game. Yes. It's just but who's anyway, here uh, and who's We're still alive, so do you guys want to give your like little shout out things? Who wants to go first? Uh, go first. Just cause... Since oh. I was the late one. <laughs> Alright. Uh, uh, my name's Alex. Um uh, channel is Alex Payne underscore 1278 um, I'm a variety streamer and my discord is the house of pain you can locate me uh, on there mostly I stream is random at the moment was because my work schedule so there you go okay who's next I guess I'll take care of it just because I gotta go use the bathroom. All right. Uh, yo, Helping Wolf. You can find me at twitch.tv. backslash Helping Wolf. Twitter at Helping Wolf. Uh, YouTube at youtube.com backslash Helping Wolf. Uh, yeah, you get the idea. Let's play with the masquerades as a streamer. Let's go. <laughs> okay, and then Grim. Uh, I am Grim Rabbit Skull. I am the resonant got gremlin with a necromantic personality i enjoy the lore of that and i enjoy cultic activities of characters so you could see where most of my personality for the character comes from um i do enjoy making romantic characters so i will absolutely positively try and do some stupid stuff if you can actually sounds like fun yeah if i can get away with it and as you all know, since this is my channel, I am Mr. I am, this is the Ink Den. I'm Mr. Inktail. Most people call me Ink. You can find me here on Twitch at you know twitch.tv forward slash the Ink Den or on Twitter at Mr. Inktail. And I thank you all for you know coming by to the first session of Lands of Oromar. I got to figure out how I'm going to actually tie the two videos together since I kind of had to end one to start another. You can do session one, session two. I'll say session one, session one, part two, then. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's something. not going to hurt you because it, basically the hours it would take to download them. Yeah, so I'll have to do that and make sure I actually... Because again, this was it. a longer session. Just oh, let, yeah. let's end it on the hour. Let it finish up to an hour at least so you have something. Cause it's can like I, can I uh, recommend a, a raid? Uh, sure. The Kiwi Claire is uh, broadcasting. Okay. Oh, nice. uh, how do you spell their name? I, I'll I'll put it in chat for you. Okay. But yeah, get your name. Man, this there. has been fun. Oh yeah, a lot of this I didn't realize was going to be so much improv. Like literally, I was planning for you guys to end up killing them, killing Shirley. It's like holy crud! They actually saved her. So to explain the thing, a DM never plans for anything. I literally only build a world, and the NPCs are my second thing I plan. I do not plan for any of them to live. I don't plan for them any of them die. I literally just plan, hey, this character, is, they, they are interested in this character. I'm going to focus on their story. You, okay. you, kind of, you kind of get the title of the story. You get the world that they're going to be in, the characters, and the players. You get the big bad. Story. You just end with, make sure you have the big bad at least exactly. some way implemented have, in a yeah. I'll be honest though, I laugh if I had like, oh my god, they're screwing themselves over with the freaking guild bastard. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> but that was fun. I was like, oh well, my god, do you guys know what you're doing? Oh no. Yeah, that was the funnier part with the oatmeal. I'm like eating it. He says he's the guild master. I go, <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. I, when I realized the fact of like, who you're looking for, like, okay, I gotta let him have this because this will at least help, him, help Grim with his character's goal. Immediately uh, botches it the opposite way. Yeah, so like, well, that's a horrible first impression. And now he's actually like, ooh, I can get another serpent now. Uh, that's why, like, the that's what the wisdom saving throw was for. It's a fact of, What about is... the fact that I... Uh, did I literally just out myself as undead to the entire game? I mean... Technically, you didn't. It was known the moment that uh, Divine Sense popped up. I mean, mm -hmm. technically, it's still only known by me. 
Yeah, I don't know nothing. And the necromancers. Yeah. And the necromancers. Because he can sense life. Oh, yeah, he senses death from you. And I'm just like, okay, I'm not even going to try and lie. Lying's been 